she was amazing. She was just amazing. She was an inspiration to a lot of us. She was the real deal. I think one of Liberia's best ever musicians. She didn't just influence people's lives, she impacted our lives. Mrs. Agnes Von Bommel, she's an icon. Agnes Nebo von Baumus. She embodied a contagious blend of ambition and pride, talent and drive, and a noble and indomitable spirit. And what a life of music she led. It all started here at Swain Industrial Academy in Bommy County, Liberia, where she got her first taste of the joy and power of music. She said she just couldn't keep away from the keyboards when she was on swing. And she started playing hymns, and she was doing the music thing when they had assemblies and stuff. She would just get on the keyboards and just start playing. Her talent will shine so early and so brightly. She will earn a scholarship when she was all but a little girl in just the seventh grade to complete her junior high and high school education in the United States. Another scholarship will take her on to Temple University in Philadelphia. She studied music and graduated um, as a concert pianist. The precocious little girl, born in what is now Grand Cru County, was now a young lady primed to return home as a musical trailblazer. She did a formal concert as a concert pianist at the City Hall in Liberia. It was quite interesting and I remember specifically with my first exposure to Chopin. And while it is fashionable nowadays to talk about the morning woman mixing professional accomplishments with raising a family, Mrs. Von Bormos pioneered that role as early as the late 1950s and the early 1960s. And she did so virtually single-handedly. She was raising two boys in a society technically on her own. And she had to be tough. But um, what was strange about her was she was very modern. With an eye on advancing her career and professional development, Von Bommels once again returned to the United States in 1973, this time to pursue graduate studies in ethnomusicology at Indiana University. Um, she was awarded a Fulbright scholarship to do her master's by um, Patricia Nixon. She returned home in 1974 to focus on what will be her life's work, directing and leading the University of Liberia Chorus. Under Von Bormu's leadership, the Chorus will enjoy great success. They will travel the world, entertaining audiences of rulers and common people alike. When we went to Sierra Leone and we took the sound of music there. We traveled to the United States, Uganda, Central Africa, Zaire, and we sang in Washington, D.C. at the Lincoln Center, at the Kennedy Center. I remember when she was preparing us to come to the United States to uh, participate in the World Music Festival and uh, the University of Liberia Corps represented Africa. At one point, the, the Zion radio station and television station opened and closed with the University of Liberia's chorus's rendition of their national anthem arranged by my mother. Achieving this remarkable degree of success was the result of her commitment to hard work and her ability to inspire and lead others. I know she instilled in me a sense of discipline, a sense of work ethic. We came to practices and we, we, know, we knew what we were there for. There was no playing around. We practiced. I mean, we used to stay at practice until 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. That was nothing. And you better don't try to get up to go use the bathroom because you will hear from Agnes. She will jack you up. Let's go. Let's press up front. The chorus was Von Bormo's baby, her life, for it and its members 
she will do anything. Mrs. Mbombos loved this chorus so much, she wouldn't let anybody mess with the chorus. I remember one time where we were to travel some places, it was then, it was then that uh, the late Sister Dennis was Minister of Foreign Affairs, and we were, to, we were supposed to get our passport, and there was some delay in the passport. So Mrs. Mrs. Mbombos had the whole chorus go down to the Foreign Ministry to see Minister Dennis, and she instructed us, say, Mr. Minister Dennis wants to be treated like a royal person. So as soon as he enters the, the, the conference hall where we were, I want everybody in the chorus just to bow down before him. And we did that. And that was his life. As soon as Mr. Dennis opened the office and came, the whole chorus just bowed, I fell on the floor before him. He, he just burst out laughing. And he said to Mr. Mbombo, you got your passport. <laughs> Being in the chorus under Von Bormann's leadership was a unique and unforgettable experience. She had the entire choir in the auditorium surround the auditorium and she stood at the front and she played dan -da 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 and achieved it from the creation. I was totally overwhelmed by the sound. Unbelievable. No music, no paper, nothing. You had to be in a choir to understand it. But being in the chorus involved more than just singing. And Von Bormus was more than a chorus director. She taught chorus members valuable life's lessons. There's so much that we learn from Agnes. You learn perfection, you know, whatever you do, make it perfect. You learn persistence from her. You, you learn to, to, to persevere to the end. She taught us to believe in ourselves, to have self-confidence and not to feel inferior to anybody. I see her in every facet of my life. I see her in the area of music. I see her when I'm supposed to be a lady. She taught us how to be women, how to conduct ourselves. The chorus, after all, was literally and figuratively one big family. Besides being in the choir with her, she was my mother-in-law as well. The connecting lines between Rudolph, Amin, Tewit, and Dumpling started far from small. They were neighbors. You know the Bible says, love thy neighbor. It's been wonderful. He's a good husband. Aggie, as chorus members affectionately called her, had a keen eye for talent and an instinctive feel for the gifts of each member. For me, when I joined the chorus, I did not know I could sing, but she discovered me and she found out that I had a wide range. I could sing high and I could sing low. Agnes said, um, what do you sing? And I said, I sing, and before I could say what I sang, she said, you sing alto. And I said, yes, I do. I think it was the Rotary Club in Liberia had a concert and I played on the concert, and Mrs. Von Bommel also played on the concert. Come 1975, and I enroll at the University of Liberia, and my memory fails me now, but I think she sought me out, and she told me I had to join the choir. And I told her, when well, Mrs. Von Bommel I can't sing, she said, well, come, you can play. She was also keen on nurturing and developing the talent she discovered. I remember it was a Sunday afternoon choir rehearsal started at about 4 o'clock and I went into Tupman Hall, the auditorium, and bam, she posted music in front of me. She said, play this. So the first song was easy. She said, oh, okay, play this other one. I played it. Then she gave me this song called Inflammatus et Accensus by Rosini. And if you look at the piano score, it is all black notes just run across the page. And I was an 18-year-old teenager then. And she could see I was nervous. And so she puts her hand on my back and she says, son, just calm down. And she started to mouth the rhythm and beat the tempo on the piano. And I started and she hummed it. And after about two minutes of this, I ripped through the whole piece. So that was the beginning of me becoming the accompanist for the University of Liberia Chorus. Today, they are all thankful. I've done professional in this, in this DC. I sang with the Master Chorale of Washington. I've sung with paid, I've gotten paid to sing. I have never, in all my X amount of years, won't say how many, <laughs> found a choir director like Eggie. I do solos and stuff at 
uh, weddings and funerals. And every time I sing, people will remember Mrs. Van Bambu say she was trained by Mrs. Van Bambu. Van Bommel's musical tastes and interests were wide and varied. We did everything that would cover the entire gamut of, you know, serious choral masterworks and, and the real, real country Gionicro songs. Yum, yum, say, I'm on I beg you, shake your body. And she had a particularly good ear for the simple beauty of Liberian and African folk music. She's the first person I know of in Liberia that actually felt the need, actually had the passion, the talent, the gift, the creativity to take Liberian music, to annotate it, to write it down, and even get it published here in the United States. After the onset of the Liberian Civil War, Mrs. Mbomus had to make the difficult and heartbreaking decision in 1990 to flee Liberia, and above all, her beloved chorus, as she sought refuge and safety in London. Even so, she remained wedded to the chorus. She wanted to gather all of its members from afar and near to pull off one great reunion with a series of concerts in the United States, as she explained in a 1995 letter to Charles Russell is stalwart of the chorus in the late 1970s and the early 1980s. Dear Charles, I would like to recapture all of my choral works which have been destroyed in the Liberian Civil War. As usual, she wanted to do this to benefit others. We can make an album, CD, and videos. Proceeds from the sale of the albums will go towards the reconstruction of the university music area and Swan Mission School that provided me the opportunity for my first degree. And with a typical careful planning and attention to detail, she had it all worked out. From a full list of over 40 former members of the chorus living in the United Barbara, States Clarice, who needed to be contacted uh, to the need for rehearsals and who should direct rehearsals before her arrival from London. I'm prepared to come 96 for rehearsals and then we should be ready to cut the album the summer of 97. James Weeks should rehearse and conduct the group before I arrive. Sadly, this was not to be. Unfortunately, she passed before we could get this off the ground. But the Lord will still hear her prayers. members in the United States would take it on their own to hold a reunion and a series of concerts. For 10 years after she planted the seed, we're here preparing to make one of her dreams come true. Having organized themselves into the University of Liberia Alumni Chorus, they've come together from all over the United States. And they did it just as she would want them to. First, practice, and practice, and practice. So we're going to continue with practice, so let's do it this way. Under the leadership of her designated standing, Jimmy Weeks. I don't care where you get the breath from, get it from somewhere, and don't break that phrase. Sing it like you're striking a, a, stretching a rubber band very gently and it's yielding to view. Each man has my Getting you not slowing it down, you just add an emotion, okay? Now, they will strive, if not for perfection, then at least an approximation of perfection. Just as if Aggie was here urging them on. 
and what a reunion it has been. An opportunity to look back with fondness at literally a magical moment at the University of Liberia generally and with the chorus in particular. That was just a wonderful time. They waxed nostalgic about their endearing moments with her. <laughs> a sweet mixture of toughness and charm. If we went out during the night and she heard about it, in the morning she would tell us, I say I'm gonna go out to party. But when I, when I say sing, you better open your blinking mouth to sing. I remember um, her just like saying to me, sing it out, just sing it out. I want to hear you. And she'd be like, don't pussy for just sing. <laughs> More important, they're using the reunion just as she wished to stage a series of fundraising concerts. Funds raised will be used, among other things, to assist the university in its efforts to re-establish itself as an accredited institution of higher education. It is a remarkable testament to her leadership and the loyalty she inspires that even in death she could pull this off. They sang in the chorus at different times. Most of them hardly knew each other. The common force, the one thing that unites them is their chorus director. Her spirit lives on in each of them. They are the legacy, living monuments to the work and achievements of their leader, mentor, mother, teacher, and director, Agnes Nebo von Bangles, a great Liberian original, truly a chorus of one. Hallelujah, amen, amen, hallelujah.